Hi guys, it's Dave Bennett with Moji-Crew.com and Theme-HTML.com. It is September 18th, 2014, and I'm going to go over keyword competitiveness, the, a way to comprehend it, actually. Uh, most of us know low, medium, and high keyword competitiveness, so whether a keyword is high competition, medium competition, or low, but we don't really understand what that means. Okay, in a way that you can just explain to, without having to log in somewhere and look at some list of high competition keywords. I mean, what makes a keyword high competition or low? Let me give you an example. If we were to go to Google uh, SK Tool, okay, and this is the kind of thing I like to point out a lot uh, because this is important to understand. Let's say I want to start by getting a list of keywords for the next job I'm doing, whatever it is, and who knows what it is. Let me just put something competitive in here, okay? So let's say cell phone spying. Okay, it's P Y I N G, and here's what most people know. Okay, let's say your business was that, like if your spouse is cheating on you. Uh, by the way, I see this particular one come up a lot. Okay, when we get this one up, we got all these ad group ideas, and let's go to keyword ideas because take a look. All the ad group ideas are high competition. All right, they got a lot of monthly searches and a lot of very high competition. And if you were to pay for AdWords, you're paying per click. And that, of course, adds up pretty quick. All right, let's go to keyword ideas. I mean, you really have to have a good business that beats your competitors if you're going to be spending the money on hours, right? Because you're going to get a click for $2.62, okay? And you're actually going to get like 100 that day, okay? So that could be $262. And you may get 100 and not get a sale. So can you absorb $262 and keep going, right? And that's the reason that hours is expensive, by the way. And that's why we always need to go as far as we can organically. And why? Because if you start winning a bunch of keywords organically and you're up on those, then those are keywords you may not care about bidding on, you know, for AdWords. You can bid on other ones for AdWords. In other words, you can narrow that pot down. Why give them an AdWord to click on when you show up right below that organically anyway? Anyway, no need to give them that extra link to click on in that case, right? Of course, we can take the concept further and say, but if you are showing up organically and you're showing up in the AdWords, then you cover more of the real estate of the page, so you increase the chances of getting clicked on. That's a different topic. We'll get to that some other day. All right, let me come back to where I'm at. Okay, high competition. Let's go to keyword ideas specifically, not ad group, but keyword ideas. Okay, and again, we run into the same problem a lot of these keywords are straight high competition very few are medium most are high okay now we all know that okay we all understand mobile phone tracking high competition spy phone high competition track mobile phone high competition here's a question without logging into this tool how can i understand what that means how can i just go to google and look up a keyword and understand how competitive it is from right here. And I would sign out, but I'm logged into the search keyword tool. You guys know to sign out so you see real results the way other people see them and not skewed according to your history, right? So I'll make sure to log out when I, go, when I jump out of here. I just wanna make this point real quick. Okay, now when, when we go, we're gonna look at what makes a keyword competitive organically. Now, if you wanna browbeat me, you'll be right to say this. When a keyword shows up as high competition here, like this one, let's try mobile phone tracking. If I were to put that here, okay. Okay, let's say that's high competition, boom. All right, these guys are paying, you know, probably like a buck 62 per click, okay. And of course, whoever's paying the most is paying the most. This guy's probably paying more. This guy's probably paying a little less. Who knows, all right? If you wanna show up, you gotta be paying like a buck 62 a click or you gotta show up organically, which is all this section down here, right? Okay, now I want to know whether this is high, medium, or low competition by looking at this page and not logging in here. That way we can understand on a more human level what makes a keyword high competition. So we are going to literally figure out that information here. And again, you can browbeat me because I'm gonna tell you my definition of high competition is how hard it is to get the keyword organically, which is different slightly than this. This is the competitiveness if you're paying on AdWords for a particular thing, um, how many competitors there are. Like for instance, there are a lot of competitors for this keyword, right? <laughs> so there you go. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, blah, 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 plus another one here. All right. 
That is why the keyword is high competition. Now, what we're going to look at is a different marker. That is how hard this thing is to win, not in the AdWords, not in there, but organically, like I said, down in the organic section down below here, right? Now, that is a slightly different marker, but the reality check is everyone in business is trying to do both as hard as they can. And the reason that these keywords are getting such love, <laughs> so many guys competing for them, is for the same kind of reason that makes them hard to win organically. If you know that it's a good idea to show up here, but you just can't get it to happen on your website, then you got to resort to paying to be here. The reason you would do it is because there are a lot of clicks. So a lot of what drives the competition up on AdWords, the reason so many people are here is because they can't get here because the competition is so high. Okay, So there is a very high correlation between competitiveness to earn the organic results versus competitiveness to earn the AdWords themselves. All right, there's a very high correlation there. We could always dig in to prove any one keyword separate from another, but that's not important for our purposes. All right, so now I'm gonna get out of here and leave us on this concept right here and let me log out because I believe in logging out. <laughs> uh, it will skew your results. You will see things showing up and they'll rank and you'll think, oh, wow, now I'm number three on the page. And then you'll realize you're signed in. And when you sign out, you find you're not really number three on the page. You're number eight on the page. Okay. The reason it would show you is number three on the page is because you're signed in because you keep clicking your own link from time to time because Google realizes that's a website you like to see, you know, things like that. OK, so it can skew the results to be signed in. You got to sign out to see what the rest of the world is saying. All right. First step. I want to understand how competitive this keyword is. I might notice this. This is 132 million results. OK, that's huge. It's not really telling me, though, because Google's showing me all combinations of these three words. OK, and, you know, every page that has at least all these three words, no matter what. OK, so if it has mobile hangouts in one part of the page and Bob called me on his phone in another part of the page and, you know, I was tracking every move that my friends made that week on another part of the page, then that would show up in this whole list. So let's be more specific. I want to put this in double quotes. Okay. All right. There we go. We dropped way down, didn't we? 385,000 pages. Now I'm staring at the pages that specifically have mobile phone tracking somewhere on them, literally, like right here in the meta description, say, or whatever part of the page is being read from here. Um, and if I don't see it here, if I click, I'll be able to find it on the page. Okay. That's the whole thing. And mobile phone tracking. All right, fine. Now I'm seeing 385,000 pages, right? That still isn't telling me enough. Okay, that's 385,000 pages, but like what, since 1997, you know, since whenever they created mobile phone tracking, most of those pages never disappeared. They're still floating around out there, no matter how old they are. But I want to know how competitive it is. That has to do with this. Google doesn't know who to show. There's 385,000 results. How's Google going to just randomly pick from one and put them up at the top? Google doesn't do that. So Google looks at a lot of other factors. One of the most important factors is how recent is an article pointing at your website or on your website. And do you know why? Because mobile phone tracking is different in 2014 than it was in 2013, than it was in 2012. Same with everything else. Carpet cleaning. Maybe the guy has a website that says he's a carpet cleaner, but he went out of business in 2002. Okay, If his website is still there, it is not going to rank, most likely. Okay, Other guys will have stepped in to fill the hole, uh, or you know, algorithmically, they have their pages up for carpet cleaning in that city, and they're going to outrank the guy because they've got newer pages up, and Google can trust that if it's recent, you are still there paying attention to it, working on it. It's live. you got a blog going, or you're mojiing pages onto the website, or you're putting ads out on other places like directories that link back to you, so you're telling the rest of the world that you're really, in, really there, you know? All right, so let's take a look at how competitive the keyword is today. We look at search tools. Let's say anytime, all right, let's step back. 
let's say in the past month, okay? So I don't want to see 383,000 pages from all time. I want to see who's been putting out a new page about that keyword in the past month, okay? And again, forget about the ad, forget about the ads. We are starting to count from here. Now, how many pages have we got? Well, we got 10. All right, at least 10. We can keep going. Now it's not showing me the numbers up here when you go when you use this thing, so I actually have to go down to lot. Whoops. Okay. 14 18. Look at that. That keyword just has tons of content being pounded out. What's that mean? That means that people are putting ads in other places. They're putting links on completely different websites pointing back at them saying, hey, I'm here. You know, so they put up a little article. Here's three reasons you should use mobile phone tracking software. And then they have a link to learn more. Click here. And that's for them. Right. That kind of thing. Or they just put themselves in a directory. Mobile phone tracking are us <laughs> at 123 Main Street, you know, Alabama. What do I know? OK. So they've got stuff out there, right? And peep or blog entries. And peep, when they do it, they consciously make a page say the keyword very often because they are intentionally trying to rank or stay ranked for this keyword. Now, that's the past month. Let's get a little tighter because what does this mean? That means this. Here's usually how it goes. If you step back and think about it, the guys who are winning the keywords are trying to stay all on top and all of them are trying to be one of the top three. OK, even the top one, but one of the top three. OK, now the guys who are on page two, there are like the top five or so on page two are also trying to get on page one because they can feel it. They can tell they're close. They really work. They got close. They are trying to get on page one. So they're trying to outdo one of those guys. Now, the bottom half of the guys on page two, they probably gave up. They felt like, man, I just can't do it. So they're going after different keywords, you see, and they're not trying to get on the front page for the keyword. OK, so they quit putting ads out there. They quit putting out backlinks. They quit doing any kind of Web 2.0, Facebook blogs. They don't know to do blogs or they're not doing enough. Um, you know, even blogging on their own website, just putting a new page on your website about something. That counts, too. And there's more tricks to it. There's stuff that we're doing now with our professional runs that are even newer than before, stronger than before, because we've been discovering some stuff in the past week. All right. And again, this is September 18th. We've been discovering stuff in the past week. That's amazing. We've been putting out runs now that are starting to index within 12 hours and starting to rank for a lot of keywords, d d d keywords we are after in 24 hours it's really getting crazy cool how strong we're getting about what we're doing but let me get back to this because this is important to understand so if we've got 15 guys putting all this content out in the past month man they are competitive all right what about the past week let's try to tighten this down and get a fix on a number here all right in the past week <laughs> we still got 10 pages of results <laughs> OK, and we've got, you know, 14. That's 140. OK, what do we got? 133 are already displayed. And then there are a few extra, you know, I don't know how many extras, but there's some other results submitted. OK, maybe if we click on it and go, we'll find like there's 15 or 18 pages or something. I don't know. OK, just some extra stuff that looks pretty much the same to Google. OK, it does go like 18 pages deep, 22 pages deep, 26 pages deep my goodness okay these guys are pushing hard now let me try to explain what this means in simple terminology let's say we go 40 pages deep let's say the top i don't care if it's the top 20 websites are putting this much content out because they're all trying to compete if okay if yeah i was gonna say if it's 400 results divided by 20 people that's like 20 ads per week per person let's try to tighten that down to get a better fix let's go for the past day OK, it's easier to deal with smaller numbers to see what we're talking about. Right. So let's do that in the past day. There's still over 10 pages of results. There's still over 14 pages of results. Wow. There's still over 17 pages of results. OK, 154. Thank you. Here's what I want to say. If the top 15 guys are competing this hard, that means if there are 154 posts and 15 guys are putting them out, that's an average of 10 per person, right? 10 to 11 per top competitor, meaning the top 10 guys on the front page plus the next five on page two, right? That's 154. So 
That's 10 per day. All right, let's tighten it up. Let's go for the past hour. Oh, thank you. <laughs> In the past hour, literally 48 minutes ago, somebody put out an ad to compete with you. It might be a backlink here that leads to their website. Okay, and somebody else over here 10 minutes ago put out another ad to compete with you, meaning if you're going for that keyword. OK, to compete with you. And so if you want to keep up with these guys, what do you know? Let's go back to where we said past 24 hours. If you want to keep up now, let's say it was the top 15. Like I said, put out an average of 10 ads each. Right. You can do that any other way. You can say the top 10 put out an average of 15 each in the past day. So if you want to compete with this keyword, one of the things you need to do is put out 15 new pages of content a day, which by human standards, <laughs> with your bare hands typing out articles, you would need an army of these guys. You're not going to just win that keyword tomorrow. They have been putting this content out every day for a long time, and Google's counting thousands of links pointing at them. One of the most powerful advantages of Moji is being able to create content, even new content, quickly on your website that can get you up so Google can keep counting more pages that you're doing. And that does work, by the way. Anyone stop and notice something like this, you know, industry-leaders.net with the site command? Uh, not for the past 24 hours. I haven't put anything on there in a while, but there's 21,500 pages on this website. If I was dripping out 100 pages per week using the task manager to run Moji for me, I could be on vacation all month long. And every week it adds another 100 pages to my site, adds another 100 pages to my site, adds another 100 unique pages to my site until I'm at 21,500 when I come back home from vacation. OK, whole thing can happen as long as my computer is on and stays at least in standby mode. All right. That's how strong Moji is, because you can do that with Moji. You know, we got training videos showing you how to use batch files and run them through your task manager to run Moji for you for as many jobs as you want on as many websites as you want. Again, I'm just trying to tie concepts together to make sure you understand where we're going and what's going on. So all the people who said, I want to show up number one for make money online. Oh, that just clicks, doesn't it? Let's think about it, right? Let's put it in double quotes. Bat. Past 24 hours, heck, past hour. Okay. Past hour, make money online. Oh, what do we got? Uh, 66 results. Okay. So what would we say? Top 15? What would that be? Uh, four articles per top competitor per hour on average is what they're putting out. You would need an army of guys to compete with that or you have to efficiently use our software. Some of the biggest stuff that we're doing now that's causing things to rank hard and compete um, I don't know if we're going to compete at this level. Mostly, I don't even try to do this. I got burnt out on trying to rank for make money online like years ago, right? Because this just, even if you rank, you rank for an hour <laughs> because other guys come and rank back. Well, that was then, by the way. And there were times that we made things hit hard back when you could still use uh, invisible links on the pages and get those backlinks to count. I actually showed how, what was it? It was website marketing, not even in double quotes. I showed how I got my main site, Website Marketing Solutions. Okay. Um, hello. Clear. Okay. It's like over a, there was over a billion results that counted at the time, like 1.4 billion. And I climbed from like page 40 to nearly the top of page two. I was like number 12 for that keyword. And then Google changed an algorithm and boom, dropped back down to page 40 again. Thought, shoot. <laughs> and Google's change of the algorithm also killed like three quarters of the pages. Um, but we just kept doing what we were doing anyway. It's, it's, you know, this ship moves so huge. And so, so many things are going on at once. Um, stuff that happens, and it's just amazing to watch it happen, is when you put good runs out now. For major keywords and you start winning them even things you didn't expect to win do you guys remember when i told you we had like a yoga for businessmen okay and i didn't realize it was even a topic and we did it for a website we put out and it was like on page three or something or nearly the top of page two look at it now two three four five it's number five and again i am not signed in these results are not being skewed search tools all that's off Okay, it's off. It's just showing my location. I can use any location I want and see results from there. But this is not geo-targeted, so it's not going to matter that way. Look at that, number five. Okay, this is a T to H website we did. 
and this is just a page showing up for the T to H website, okay? And it's just, it's ranking. It's a professional theme to HTML website, one that somebody bought from us that went through the production line. It's very cool run. Everything about it's really, really nice and laid out well, okay? We got so many. For guys who didn't know to look, check this out real fast, and you'll see theme to HTML.com, okay? You can hover over the themes. I've put a bunch up here. You can check these things out. These are neat. Some of you guys are not even going to believe how different you can get with the styles. Take a look at this one just so you can see it real quick. Look at this. Okay. Look at how clean this layout is, albeit that this image needs to be updated. The guy's changing this image. Um, look at this. Look at how clean. Look at that. That is the banner slider, by the way. This is a clean layout, right? This is a theme to HTML website. This is what you can do with theme to HTML without knowing any coding at all. All right. This is actually easy to do. It's just the guy did a really cool job and I give him kudos for it because this is just I like it. I like the way it's laid out. This is laid out wonderfully. OK, so anyway. What do I want to say now? Um, yeah, so there you go. There's how to understand the competitiveness of a keyword. Let me show you a keyword that's certainly not competitive, like low-hanging fruit, like something you could just go and do a run for really, really fast and sell uh, because somebody would buy it if, if they're not there. Watch this. Kansas, this is a fun one that we just saw the other day too. City carpet cleaning. Okay, and if we go there, it's like 1.4 million results. Yeah, I'm not surprised there's not more. I mean, Kansas City carpet cleaning, how many results can there be anyway? Well, check it out. Again, double quotes, 1.4 million. What's the drop to? Okay, like 9,820. And let's just take a look in the past, like, um, let's start with the past hour. Okay. Oh, no results found. So it's showing results for those four keyword combinations that are not the phrase. Okay, so in the past hour, no one put out a single page, okay? Google did not find any new page in the past hour for that keyword. All right, fine. Let's let's look at the past 24 hours, okay? Um, how many pages? Oh, wait, that's right. It took off my double quotes. I got to put them back on, okay? Past 24 hours. Oh, no results found in the past 24 hours. Well, that's funny. There have to be more than 10 carpet cleaners in that area. Kansas City's huge. You know what that means to me? Those guys aren't all that web savvy down there in Kansas City, are they? Probably for any industry. If they're not in carpet cleaning, they probably aren't if they're dentists. Doctors, lawyers, chocolatiers, homeopaths. Man, Kansas City could just be one of those great boons for our business, just like so many other cities where they don't know what they're doing. You know, online. They're great carpet cleaners. <laughs> Let me not take anything away. All right, what about the past week? Finally, some results. Oh, I lost my double quotes again. Let me put them back. Okay. Boom. Always check, right? Oh, my gosh. In the whole past week, this isn't even in English, okay? Whatever it is, it's it's just some link that popped up out of nowhere. And some other sites can, like, scrape websites for basic information. Um, here's one, okay? I don't know about this. Maybe. That could be two, three. Um, you could say four, let me see, five maybe, although that's, what's with the Indonesia, but could be, and it could be that they're local in Kansas City, five, let me see, and then yellowbot.com tag, so six, I see six, that's not even one per guy on the front page, that means four of the guys on the front page aren't even putting out a single page per week that deals with this one keyword, that's Four, that's virtually half of the front page isn't even trying in a week to, to go for the keyword. You know what that means? You know how hard it would be for you to win that keyword? Won't be hard, will it? It'll be really, really easy, won't it? Right? And then cool things are when you get guys who do lists of keywords. I have our guys for our professional runs that look up keywords that are low to medium competition that have a lot of hits. I can get a list of, of terms for something like horse racing. OK, online horse bets and stuff. I can get that together and it'll be all low competition, like 100 keywords that are low competition, low hanging fruit, easy to beat, easy to grab. And they add up to some crazy thing like 40,000 searches a month. 
It doesn't mean your website's going to get 40,000 visitors a month, right? Keep that in mind. If this was a single keyword that got 40,000 visitors a month, keep in mind that there's like 20 things on the page to click on, okay? So if you're equally competitive to everything else, just assuming everyone's equally competitive, then you could, you'd be clicked on like one out of 20 times. So out of 40,000 times a month, just to make this clear, divide by 20, okay? That is more realistic. That's what you're anticipating if you're equally competitive on the page. Say you're not competitive, not much. And some people get this screwed up. They think, what if I'm just kind of like mostly competitive, even though I may not be nearly competitive enough down to the word. So what if I just say, hey, contact me for this. But somebody else is saying, our carpet cleaning is better than their carpet cleaning. Somebody else is saying carpet cleaning for better prices. Somebody else is saying special five uh, rooms for the price of four. Okay. Okay. Uh, carpet cleaning, you know, um, we, we have it done in the next two days from your order. I don't know. And all you say was we're the best company for carpet cleaning. Okay. I don't care if you're number one, if your message is absolutely not competitive at all, if you don't have any kind of car, uh, copywriter skills to make your message competitive, you want to get a copywriter. We have four on staff, right? Because their styles are different and we need different guys for different jobs so we can make the pitches for our clients work. Because I'll tell you what, if, if you're not nearly competitive enough in your pitch, it doesn't matter even if you're number one, people click on the thing that catches their attention. Let me explain it to you this way. Okay, here's another way to see it. If there are two gas stations, okay, this might be a fun way to see it. There's two gas stations selling gas at four bucks a gallon, okay? Format, font, let's just bring this up so you can see it better. Okay, I just want to make this point really, really clear because this is important. Four bucks per gallon, I'll just say four bucks per GL, okay? That's four bucks a gallon. And then the other guy is across the street. He's also selling at four bucks a gallon. Now, what do you know? Chances are good that these guys are going to get like an even amount of traffic. It's going to be, you know, so the guys on the left side of the street will pull in here. The guys on the right side of the street will pull in there, right? Well, one of them, what if one of them becomes slightly less competitive than the other? Like um, this guy goes down to 390, okay? But this guy stays at four, okay? This would be you with a message that isn't that hot. Maybe you're in the best spot. But if this guy's message is better, you don't think, well, you'll get 45% of the traffic and he'll get 55%, do you? No, he's going to get 85% of the traffic. You're going to get the remaining 15%. For those of you that haven't made as much money as you like online, often it is because everyone's paying so much attention to where they show up and not enough attention to what they are saying actually okay those aren't the only factors if you're an affiliate of a program where you say nothing different than what the program owner says then we've just given the program owner all the glory and removed ourselves from the equation it's hard to see you in that it's hard to see the interest of clicking on you in that it can be done but the reason that we do runs on theme to html is even if you're an affiliate for some other program okay you can stand out and have your own website, your own style, your own way of doing things and make yourself show up for the things that you want to show up for. So you can have your style. I don't care what it is. I don't care what it's for. You can set up your style and get yourself set to make your money. And then for those of you that want an MLM downline, guess what? If you have theme to HTML, you can make copies of this website for each next person to put on their website. And so all you would change is whatever their, their affiliate link. Okay. Like that is an affiliate link or it leads to an affiliate link. Okay. And you can just change it to your own. And then if somebody else joins your downline, change it to theirs. Cause now it's going to benefit you when you benefit them. And why do you want to create your own website? So it ranks. And also because we're going to do a, an internal Moji run on it, that's going to become standard on the pro runs as soon as we hit 2495 uh for the price as soon as we commit to that instead of the 1995 they will have an internal moji run for you stack of keywords your website will start off being like 600 pages or so okay now let me explain one thing because this is interesting i've been talking about two things and you might have a really big question so yeah all i want to say here by the way 
do not ignore the importance of a message. I see so many guys show up, but their message is off and they don't get nearly enough sales. And it's because these guys are more competitive with their message than you are with yours. So you want to go look at your message, be self-critical and think, how can I change it to make it better? And then do it or have us do it or have another copywriter do it. Just get it done no matter what. Okay, I said that. I want to make one last point. I'll wrap this up. My next training will be over something called Ahrefs. And we're going to use an example there and go over backlinking profiles so that you understand the importance of variability because we've really gotten into that very seriously with Moji and the results are astounding. Okay, so I'll explain that pretty shortly. But right now, let me let me point this out. Here's what most people do. They get themselves like a 10 page website. This is, let's say that this is a 10 page website, okay? And then they start driving link juice into the front page. As a matter of fact, let me try to explain link juice this way. Let's say their page is cold. It has very little color to it. Maybe you can see the differential, okay? They created the website, but they don't have much going on about that. Now, I got this question. What if we drive a little link juice in, and most people drive it into their home page, right? Let's say that this is their home page, okay? And then these are other pages on their site, two, three, four, five, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, ten page website, like I said. Now, you're going to drive link juice into your home page. Most people put a little advertisement out into their home page, okay? Boom, guess what? Their home page hits page one. You know what I see people do? They say, I'm still not making enough sales, so I'm going to add some more link juice. I'm going to put out some other links, just something. You know, so they go on, put some more. All right, fine. They're still driving link juice here. Guess what? The the link juice that they drive here makes this page hotter and hotter and hotter, which makes it easier and easier to show up on page one, okay, by making it hotter and hotter and hotter, okay? That's awesome. And also, because they're adding juice here, juice is bound to spread here. So let me step back. I want to just make sure that you kind of can really sort of imagine this. It's really important to be able to imagine by doing this, we made this page a little hotter, not a lot, let's say like that hot. And in so doing, all of these pages got a little bit hotter, okay? Like that hot. Of course, this one's the hottest because it's where we put the link juice, okay? So then people add a little more link juice, okay? This is just a visual to help you understand. So everything steps up a notch. This goes a step hotter. And that makes all of these pages also a step hotter, okay? Boom. Now. The question is, how hot do you have to get to get on the front page? The answer is, it depends on your keyword competition. Let's say this one, the keyword that this page is for is low competition. Let's say this one is medium competition, high competition. So I kind of just want to do that again. Low, medium, high, low, medium, high. Don't worry, this won't be boring long. <laughs> All right, now what's that mean? Lows hit right away. Pretty much a little link juice, even here, even the first one, two or three different ways you put yourself out, bam, that locked it in. This page got on the front page, that got on the front page, that got on the front page, just from having a little link juice. By the way, for those of you who never do any kind of backlinking, you never, ever, 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 ever put a single link to your website anywhere else, or the links you put out are bogus, like when people use auto spamming techniques, you know, just... Um, WordPress comments, uh, forum profile links that on forums in different languages that have no keyword relationship whatsoever. Very often those links never get indexed in Google. And if they do not get indexed in Google, if you cannot find the link where your backlink is in double quotes on Google, then you got no juice from that work. I don't care if it's 150 links. We did that once. We had someone show us their work. They showed how they put 200 ads out for us. One got indexed by Google in the first month, and the one and none ever did after that. And the one that got indexed, it was an accident. The coding came out wrong. The link looked like coding gibberish because the page didn't accept the coding, so it was just auto submitted. No one looked it up. It didn't even have a good keyword on it. It was, and it just showed up on pure accident. <laughs> and it wasn't even for a related page. So even though it showed up, the quality score was low. All right. But when you say, I'm going to put myself in one directory, I'm going to find some page I can reply on that relates to my topic here. And I'm going to go find, I'm going to go put a note on Facebook about my business and link to it. That's it. That's all you had to do. That made this happen. 
and that got some of your pages to show up on Google. Now, when people add a little more, and this gets hotter, then you could get some of your medium pages showing up on Google, okay? Now, what is the point of emoji run? Here's the point. Each page is only gonna show up for like one, two, three keyword combinations, and that's it, okay? So that's it. There's a keyword you won, there's a keyword you won, 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 and you drove all your juice in your homepage. And guess what? Some of this was wasted juice. You already hit page one here. You didn't need to add here. What could we have done? We could have, no, Phil, we could have put some pages into, or some link juice into any other page that we wanted, right? We could have put something out here for this page on related pages. We could even just do a little more, right? You could put some link juice here. Over the course of even a week, just two a day, you know, we could put some link juice here. Okay, I don't care if it's low. We could put a little link juice here. Maybe it's a little more. Guess what? That makes this page hot, that page hot, and that page hot, you know, so to speak, right? Each one hotter than the rest, okay? Hotter than the rest. But because you did this, all of these get a little bit hotter anyway. These leftover ones go up a notch, right? They all get closer to ranking on page one, and that's really the point, right? Now, the problem is you only have 10 keywords at play. So why do you think we do emoji run? Insert, okay? Let me just make this clear. No, oh, Phil, all right? Here's our emoji run in the middle that's going to either lead people to those pages or it's going to be part of those pages or it's going to lead to those conversion activities that we want at the end on the money site or the newsletter or, or watch the videos. Who knows? But let's say we've got our thousand page website. Okay. And on our thousand page website, we start off real light link juice all over again. We got a thousand pages, a thousand keywords. And it's going to be like low, medium, high, low, medium, high, low, medium, high keywords. Okay. A bunch of lows, mediums, and highs. In our case, the way we're doing it professionally now, they're low. Uh, all of them are low, basically. Low, maybe some mediums. Um, but they all have searches. And so we're going to win them with very, very little effort. Okay. And then what? Okay. Let me make the rest of this clear. Delete. See if you can see this now. You might be able to see it really, really clearly. Okay. Delete. Okay. If they're all low or maybe some medium, mostly low, and we drive some link juice here and we drive some here, let me do this, okay, here and here. Are you starting to see where this is going? Probably. Let's say, let's say we drove link juice into those, okay? We got those pretty hot. You know what? All of these just picked up some strength, didn't they? They all got hotter, right? A lot hotter, because that's true. That's Our emoji sitemaps are awesome for that, by the way. Absolutely awesome for spreading the link juice out appropriately. Guess what? When these are all lows like that, okay, you know, low, okay, and then these are hotter, you know, like I said, because they are, <laughs> and you spread link juice and you do a little of this, you know what? These things kick hard and you start showing up for a thousand keywords or 800, say, out of the thousand where you're ranking on those. And that's because they're all low to medium, maybe a couple of mediums in here, not many, okay? The ratio is mainly lows, whoops, all right? And the funny thing about it is you just start to pop up all over the place and with that comes traffic. As long as we copy wrote your message first or you have a copywriter copyright your message first or you just know how to type a really convincing message. Because we even did training on that. How many of you guys remember the uh, eavesdropping sessions? One of the recorded topics was, Dave, I'm showing up number one, two, or three for like all of my keywords. Okay. And I've got 2,500 pages out there, but we're really hardly getting any sales. Why? We went and we looked at how competitive the guy's message was compared to the ones right around it on a few different keywords. And we realized that he modeled his message wrong. The message he built all of those separate messages from had the wrong impact in the first place. It wasn't interesting. Not like the other messages were. When you get professional copywriting done, or if you do this, you go and study what your competitors say on keywords you want and make sure that when you write your message, it is one, 
different than theirs. Google does not want to index similar stuff right next to each other. And two, um, it is competitive in meaning. It is interesting like the other ones. Okay. By the way, I had guys that used to say, hey, I, want, I had somebody once say, I want to win franchise. And they said, if you want to win the keyword franchise, first of all, I didn't know why. Uh, but if you do want to win the keyword franchise, guys said, doesn't that mean that has to be your page title, just the word franchise? Okay. And it would be, no, of course not. Because if that was true and, and if it was your page title had to be the keyword and that's all there is to it, then the top 10 guys would look like this on Google's front page. Now, Google doesn't want to show a page that looks like that to a bunch of people and say, click one of these. <laughs> Do you get it? You want your keyword and you want your meta description to be different. But when you have proper copywriting, you're going after the keyword with a spin. So it doesn't look identical to the other keyword entries on the page or the other entries on the page. And you want your meta description to be different than the other guys. So that your pair, your page title with your meta description are competitive. Okay. So. Now that you understand that, clear, and you may have understood it before, do you see the point of emoji run, especially now in our theme to HTML templates where all the pages are going to look right? Here's someone that did one of his own, uh, just to make the point, old school, no body. Here, this guy did um, emoji run for himself. And what's the point? Sitemap, if we just go and take a good look, okay, boom. All these pages are showing up for the different keyword combinations he's after. These page titles are different. They say different things. The meta description is different, but they all lead you here. And so no matter what we're talking about, and this is kind of interesting, what are we really getting in front of people? The main stuff we want links right back to the front end pages that get them going. Step one, step two, step three, step four, you know, exercise less. FX training system, maybe click one of these things here or go through the menu. So we are using this content, Mojit content, as an excuse to show up for lots of keyword combinations to get all of this upper stuff in front of people's faces for key and all of this left sidebar stuff, especially to show up for in front of people's faces on keyword after keyword after keyword after keyword. Okay. And at the bottom, we've even repeating our steps just to get people added if they got all the way down, or they could go to the next page to keep reading. Okay, and this will just start them off on step one. You get it? Now that's just smart. Now the only other thing to bother doing, because here's what the guy's got. He's got this going on. The only other thing to bother doing is getting some backlinks, which now we, now we have wrapped into our process anyway. We're doing this. It's just we're doing even bigger and better things than we ever did before this part we we are doing this but we're doing it on the main site and the emoji runs just been added recently we're starting to do that now but we're doing it in this newer way that's really really awesome by the time people are paying 24.95 the way we're doing it is the highest best way we have ever done it before and this is really awesome. It is as full a package as you can possibly get to get kick started and have the software to just expand by pressing a button. Once a week, hit the button. That's it. That's all you have to do. You don't even have to hit it. Program your task manager. Okay. Any of you know how to do that stuff? I mean, we'll get into that, but there's a task scheduler. Some people call it task manager. I do too. Task scheduler. And in there, you can run this thing, have it run particular tasks for you. And when you have it run those tasks, guess what it's going to be? Once every Wednesday at 1130 p.m. if the computer is off. Yeah, I get that. Okay. If the computer is off and I don't have any setup in here, I don't use this computer for that. Uh, if your computer is off, then it can, or if it's sleeping, then it can wake the computer to perform the task, run out all the runs you had programmed in, and then put the computer back to sleep if you want. And it'll do it every Wednesday at 11.30 p.m. or every third Tuesday of the month, right? Or on every 1st and every 15th. I mean, it's so easy to create a basic task and set the schedule for it and the rules for it and have it just run the batch files that run the runs. That way your Moji site gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger automatically on a nice, even, sensible schedule without you doing anything. Your computer does it for you. All unique pages being added for you. 
So the only thing to bother doing is go find some interesting directory to put a link up in once in a while. Just that. And the rest of this will just take care of getting hotter and increasing what you really want to happen, whatever those conversion actions are. All right. I hope you found this topic interesting. I'm going to stop it right here. I know it's been long, but I think it's been pretty informative. Hopefully a lot of you feel like you learned a great deal more than you knew and that it's running through your head and you have a really good grip over it now. You have a sense of things that used to baffle you. I'm hoping that's, that that fog's lifted and you understand a lot more of what's going on out there. Okay, And you can tell whether to trust people who tell you you can win keywords and how you win them in the future when you hear pitches. Okay, Make sure you get that much figured out. All right. That's that. My next topic, like I said, we're going to go over something called Ahrefs. And I'm going to show you how to read that thing in a sensible way. You're going to really enjoy understanding backlinking profiles the way Google likes them today and how, how to see it in front of your face in a way that just makes the whole thing make sense. And all of a sudden you realize how to, how to do your backlinking. Okay. And so it's pretty interesting stuff. All right. I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you in the next topic. Take care.